I think there's a number of challenges inherent in improvement science and challenges that face those of us who, who are real advocates for the science of improvement. And the principal challenges that I see are how do you engage different communities in the science of improvement? So on one side, we have the improvers themselves, the expert improvers who are out there in the service. And what we want of them from, from improvement science is a more uh, rigorous, more evidence-based approach towards um, doing what they do. Uh, a greater commitment to building the evidence base themselves and working with researchers to do so. So that's one group. I don't think that's the biggest challenge. I think that most improvers out there get that and are working towards it. Um, the bigger challenge, I think, is actually engaging the research community in improvement science. And by that, I mean the established research community, particularly those working in, in health ser service research and even more those working in the clinical sciences. And the challenge for improvement science that I see is that it is although it builds on uh, basic research as it builds on a whole range of different disciplines, it is intrinsically quite a different kind of science. First of all, in terms of its applied nature, you know, you can't um, do good research without being linked to practitioners, so, that, so it's the partnership between the two that's important. Certainly it's multidisciplinarity, but also a range of philosophies and assumptions and theories that are really quite different from other sciences. And the question is, how do you engage leading researchers who might be getting close to improvement science territory by doing, you know, calling themselves health service researchers, but how do you really get them into the improvement science forum? And that, I think, is the big challenge that's facing us. In my personal experience, it's selling improvement science as something that's practical, that's useful, that's about delivering better care for patients, better outcomes for patients, for populations, better health systems. Because almost everybody who works in the field, whether they're practitioners or whether they're academics, can see the deficiencies of the environment that we're working in. So saying, actually, here's a solution. So, you know, we've got very strong um, basic research, biomedical research. We've got pretty strong clinical research in this field. Um, but in order to make a difference, to turn those good ideas into something that's useful for patients, we have to focus on delivery. And improvement science is a science that helps us to deliver better than we've delivered in the past. And when I frame things in that way to the various people that I'm trying to influence, it really seems to work. And I guess I'm particularly gratified that when I talk to what I call the big beasts, the kind of the big academic health science centres that we have in the UK, um, three in London, one in Cambridge, one in Manchester, uh, centres who are, who are world renowned in terms of the quality of their biomedical and clinical research, when I frame it in that way, they say, actually, yes, there is something missing from what we're doing. And I'm starting to see those kind of uh, organisations really starting to engage in improvement science. As an example, um, UCL is just to a about to appoint its first um, senior academic in improvement science. So you know, a major step forward for an organisation that has a very strong biomedical reputation but hasn't really been interested in the delivery end before. I think we're at a very exciting juncture here. I think, I think we're at a juncture which could represent a paradigm shift in terms of how we think about research and how we think about practice and how we bring the two together. I think there's, there's big risks in, in, in framing and promoting this challenge as an improvement science challenge. Um, but I think there's an enormous gain because there's no doubt that the health service, healthcare delivery is not short of good ideas. It's not short of evidence. The challenge is how do you turn that evidence into something that's useful to practitioners, to people working in the service, whether they be managers or clinicians. How do you, how do you address that, what Cooksey called the second implementation gap? And I think improvement science provides an answer which other approaches that we've tried to do over the last 20 years have failed to do.